We are constantly working with partners, Zelensky said in his nightly video address, adding that he expects some important results next week from a series of international events that will tackle the situation in Ukraine. While Zelensky has held numerous talks with Biden, French President Emmanuel Macron and Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan since Russian forces invaded in late February, the accumulation of discussions in just one day is not a regular event. Zelensky said he had thanked Biden for unprecedented defense and financial help the United States has provided for Ukraine and talked with the U.S. president about an effective anti-aircraft defense systems to protect the population. Earlier, Zelensky said that he held a very meaningful conversation with Macron on defense, energy, economy, diplomacy that lasted more than an hour and very specific talks with Erdogan on assuring Ukraine's grain exports. Turkey, which acted as a mediator in peace talks in the early months of the war, also worked alongside the United Nations in a grain deal, which opened up Ukrainian ports for exports in July after a six-month de facto Russian blockade. Erdogan's office said the Turkish leader had a call with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Sunday, in which he had called for a quick end to the conflict. Putin said last week that Moscow's near-total loss of trust in the West would make an eventual settlement over Ukraine much harder to reach and warned of a protracted war. Macron has championed diplomacy in the conflict but has mixed messages that it was up to Kiev to decide when to negotiate with Moscow. But also that security guarantees were needed for Russia, have unnerved some Western allies, Kiev and the Baltic countries. There are no peace talks and no end in sight to the deadliest conflict in Europe since World War II, which Moscow calls a special military operation and Ukraine and its allies an unprovoked act of aggression. On the ground in Ukraine, the entire eastern front line has been continuously shelled with heavy fighting taking place. Moscow is also targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure with waves of missile and drone strikes, at times cutting off electricity for millions of civilians in winter, when mean temperatures can be several degrees below zero Celsius. Suspect in 1988 Lockerbie bombing now in U.S. custody. Authorities in Scotland and the U.S. said Sunday that the Libyan man that destroyed a passenger plane over Lockerbie, Scotland, in 1988 is now in U.S. custody. A Justice Department spokesman confirmed the U.S. had taken custody of Abu Aguila Mohammed Massoud and he is expected to make his initial appearance in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. Scotland's Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service said in a statement, the families of those killed in the Lockerbie bombing have been told that the suspect Abu Ajila Masyudi Ker al Marimi is in U.S. custody. Pan AM Flight 103, traveling from London to New York, exploded over Lockerbie on December 21, 1988, killing all 259 people aboard the plane and another 11 on the ground. It remains the deadliest terror attack on British soil. Kara Wipes, president and spokesperson of the group victims of Pan AM Flight 103 whose brother was killed in the bombing, said Masood's arrest was an amazing feat for the families, and finally justice for our loved ones who were innocent. To have one of the people responsible for the murder of our loved ones stand trial in the U.S. is one of the most important things to the families and to all of us, Wipes said. The amount of people involved, we kept it on the forefront of six administrations. In 2001, Abdelbaset al megrahi was convicted of bombing the flight. He was the only person convicted over the attack. He lost one appeal and abandoned another before being freed in 2009 on compassionate grounds because he was terminally ill with cancer. He died in Libya in 2012 still protesting his innocence. Scottish prosecutors and police, working with UK government and US colleagues, will continue to pursue this investigation, with the sole aim of bringing those who acted along with Almegrahi to justice, the Crown Office added.
Masood had previously received a 10-year sentence in Libya for crafting a bomb used in a separate attack. The U.S. announced charges against him in 2020 on the 32nd anniversary of the Lockerbie attack and sought his extradition. The criminal complaint was largely based on a confession Masood made to Libyan authorities in 2012, as well as his travel records, which allegedly tied him to the crime. At long last, this man responsible for killing Americans and many others will be subject to justice for his crimes, William Barr, the attorney general at the time, said at a news conference. In a statement to CBS News, Barr said that he told the families of the victims 30 years ago that we would do everything possible to bring the perpetrators to justice. During my last weeks in office in 2020, I pushed this hard, it was unfinished business. We announced charges just before I left and started initial contacts with Libyans. It is critical that terrorists know that they will be tracked down and punished no matter how long it takes," Barr added. In that interview, U.S. officials said, Massoud admitted building the bomb in the Pan Am attack and working with two other conspirators to carry it out. He also said the operation was ordered by Libyan intelligence and that Gaddafi thanked him and other members of the team after the attack, according to an FBI affidavit filed in the case. While Massoud is now the third Libyan intelligence official charged in the U.S. in connection with the Lockerbie bombing, he would be the first to stand trial in an American courtroom. U.S. officials did not say how Massoud came to be taken into U.S. custody. But in late November, local Libyan media reported that Massoud had been kidnapped by armed men on November 16 from his residence in Tripoli, the capital. That reporting cited a family statement that accused Tripoli authorities of being silent on the abduction. In November 2021, Najla Mangosh, the foreign minister for the country's Tripoli-based government, told the BBC in an interview that we, as a government, are very open in terms of collaboration in this matter, when asked whether an extradition was possible. Torn by civil war since 2011, Libya is divided between rival governments in the east and west, each backed by international patrons and numerous armed militias on the ground. Militia groups have amassed great wealth and power from kidnappings and their involvement in Libya's lucrative human trafficking trade. Hong Kong shares drop 2% as investors look ahead to Fed meeting, U.S. inflation this week. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 2.11%, leading losses in the region. The Hang Seng Tech Index shed 3.71%. In Australia, the S&P ASX 200 was down 0.54%. Japan's Nikkei 225s fell 0.36% while the topic slid 0.15%. South Korean benchmark Kospi shed 0.69%, and the Kostak dipped 0.47%. The MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan slipped 1.03%. On Monday, India is scheduled to release inflation and industrial output data. Later this week stateside, the Federal Reserve is set to begin its two-day meeting on Tuesday. Economists widely expect the U.S. Central Bank to raise rates by half a percentage point Wednesday. The latest reading for the U.S. Consumer Price Index is also slated for Tuesday. Analysts polled by Reuters expect the index rose 0.3% in November. Southeast Asian markets are in for a bungee jump in 2023, according to JP Morgan. Southeast Asian markets will move in a trajectory resembling that of a bungee jump next year, taking a plummet before surging in the second half of 2023, JP Morgan wrote in a report. 
That is likely to be characterized by a sharp fall followed by a rapid increase in altitude followed by another decline until eventually markets come to rest at rock bottom, analysts led by Rajiv Butra wrote. They attributed that to weakened purchasing power in light of monetary policy tightening, lower savings, and the higher cost of borrowing. Additionally, JP Morgan forecasts the MSCI ASEAN index will retest this year's lows and potentially move even lower in the first half of 2023 on the back of tightening financial conditions and weaker external demand, among other factors. The MSCI ASEAN index plunged 22% from February's high to the year's lowest in October. Janet Yellen sees much lower inflation by end of 2023, but says recession risks remain. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen foresees a substantial reduction in inflation by the end of next year, provided there's no unanticipated shock. Yellen, speaking in an interview on CBS 60 Minutes, premised her optimism on shipping costs and gas prices coming down. She cautioned, however, that recession risks remain and that the economy is still prone to shocks. But she said this could be buffered by a very healthy banking system, as well as business and household sectors. There's a risk of a recession. But it certainly isn't, in my view, something that is necessary to bring inflation down. The latest reading for the U.S. Consumer Price Index is expected Tuesday. Analysts polled by Reuters expect the index rose 0.3% in November. Before this, October's Consumer Price Index inched up less than expected. Even with the slowdown in the inflation rate, it still remains well above the Fed's 2% target. Oil prices climb more than a dollar on Moscow's threat to cut output. Oil prices rose more than a dollar on the back of further China reopening optimism and Moscow threatening to slash oil production in retaliation for price caps on Russian crude exports. In early Asia hours, Brent crude futures rose 1.53%, or $1.11 to $72.13 a barrel, while U.S. marker West Texas Intermediate Futures traded up 1.29%, or close to a dollar at $77.08 a barrel. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Friday told reporters in the Kyrgyz capital of Bishkek that Russia simply will not sell to countries imposing the West's price cap on Russian oil, Reuters reported. Dan Niles is betting the S&P 500 will hit a new low in 2023. Here's how he is trading it. Futures fall slightly. Stock futures have slowly declined throughout the first hour of trading. Dow futures are down about 50 points, or around 0.2%, while Nasdaq 100 futures have dipped about 0.3%. Wall Street coming off losing week The major averages fell on Friday to clinch a losing week, snapping a two-week winning streak for Wall Street.